Top of the morning, comics fans. I am here having my coffee in the wonderful establishment of Quantum Comics, where adventure awaits. And I figured, why not do our What's New This Week at the comic book store? Let's get right into it, shall we? First off... Avengers, the next issue. It is now issue 674. I can never remember with this new numbering schematic that Marvel's got going. But this is a, a huge Avengers storyline. You can see here this is part five. So it's a massive event that's said to change the Avengers forever. Will it? Check it out. Bane Conquest. So this is essentially almost... It's a, I was going to say a reimagining of Bane, but that's not quite accurate. It's more like a, an upgrade for Bane, this entire series. It delves very deep into his character, and it expands his character into more than just the, the crazy villain that broke the bat way back when. Speaking of the bat, we've got Batman number 36. This continues Batman and Catwoman's uh, little adventure through the desert domain, but this time there's an appearance by everyone's favorite Kryptonian. That's right, Superman. All right, here is a fun one. Batman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles team up two. That's right, because the first one was so awesome and rocking. Freddie Williams Jr., not Jr., Freddie Williams the third, not Junior, duh, still too early. I haven't, as you can see, I've still got some coffee left. I haven't had enough, obviously. Anyways, Freddie Williams is an amazing artist. This is his stuff right on the cover, so the interior looks just like that. And if you've read the first series, you know how awesome this one is going to be. And if you haven't read the first series, what are you waiting for? Come on. It's amazing. Incredible. Astounding. Many more words I could throw in there, but won't because we have a limited amount of time. Batman, The White Knight. Now, this is a mini-series that takes a more realistic look on the Dark Knight and his relationship with the Joker. When I say relationship, I mean more of a, um attempt to kill each other. Okay, well, you know, it's a relationship too, right? Captain America, trying to come back to what he used to be after the events of the last big Marvel series, which of course was Secret Empire, in which he was an agent of Hydra. How is Cap going to do it? Will Cap be able to do it? He's pretty determined. He's pretty strong. He's pretty tough. I think there's a good chance. Dead Man. Now, if you're not familiar with this classic DC Comics character, he's essentially a ghost that jumps into the bodies of other people and uses them kind of like... <laughs> I was going to say kind of like a meat puppet, but that sounds really nasty. Uh, he kind of possesses them in order to do fix rights. No, not fix rights. Fix wrongs. Like I said, still early for me. Fix wrongs with them. And he's a very cool character, and the best part about this is it's, none by, it's done by the classic comic book artist, Neil Adams. So the interiors are just astounding. I mean, look at that. Amazing stuff. Amazing. It's no wonder Neil Adams has, has inspired so many generations of comic book artists because his stuff is just incredible and continues to be to this very day. The Guardians of the Galaxy continue, continue their epic run. I am not speaking well today. I'm sorry about that. Iron Fist, teaming up still with Sabretooth of all people. And if you are comic book aficionados like I try to be, you will know that Sabretooth first appeared in early Iron Fist comics. And they don't like each other a whole lot. But they need to work together in order to stop the crazy stuff that's happening. Very cool martial arts mayhem. Highly recommend it. Red Sonia. I am a huge fan of Red Sonia. She is an amazing, an amazing character. And in this particular series, she is bumped into the future. That's right. So over 10,000 years out of the Hyborian age, she's learning things of the future. She's, I was going to say she's fitting right in, but she's not really fitting right in. But she is doing pretty awesome, all in, uh, in her attempt to stop the machinations of Kulan Gath, nasty Hyborian age sorcerer who just happens to be alive in this time. 
because he's a sorcerer. He got all sorts of crazy Stygian magics roaming around and he's controlling them and doing nefarious deeds. Star Trek, Next Generation, Broken Mirror. This is a mirror universe story, as you can tell by the different outfits and the super buffness of not only Picard, but everybody else. Apparently in the mirror universe, working out happens a whole lot. Pretty cool though. Star Wars, Darth Vader, number nine. Now this is very cool because in the last few issues we found out that the Inquisitors that you see in the Star Wars Rebels cartoon are actually under the control of Vader and they are known as the Inquisitorious. And this tells the story of how Vader became their leader and how Vader got his lightsaber was the first arc. Really, really good stuff. And in this, he actually fights the old... Jedi that uh, is trying to retake or reclaim some of the holocrons that were taken over on Coruscant from the Jedi Temple by Palpatine and his crew. Really great stuff. So, so much fun. And you find out so much about the Inquisitors, which seem to be, they just kind of threw them into the Rebels cartoon, right? You don't really know what where they came from, how they came to be, what they are. In this, this series, you find out. Check it out. Superman, number 36. Now, this looks rather ominous, because Superman's sitting in a uh, is it metal, stone, nasty-looking throne with skulls in front of Apocalypse. Who else have you seen sit similar to this? Why? Dark side, of course, is what you're saying. You're screaming at the camera right now. I know it because I can hear it. Yeah. So, by appearances, this looks as if Superman is now ruling Apocalypse, but Lex Luthor was ruling Apocalypse because Darkseid had died, is another thing that you're no doubt screaming at me right now. Well, I'm not going to give it away. you got to come and check it out, but I will say it does not disappoint. And Venom Inc. Alpha. That's right, because Venom is just so awesome that he cannot be contained as just one. He has to have his own incorporated unit. So this is just what it sounds like. Many, many Venoms and more. There's even the Anti-Venom. And Anti-Venom is not Aunt May. Get it? Ant Venom? Ant May? Yeah, something totally different. Anyways, another thing I wanted to, sh to show you. Check out this bad boy. This is huge. This is, if you don't know, known as an omnibus. And this details the really cool and different Justice League Detroit era. Big, wonderful looking volume. Fits perfect on your shelf. Very good stuff. And if you're a Watchmen fan, the Watchmen Annotated Edition. Amazing stuff, and if you don't know what annotated means, it just means with the addition of really exemplary notes. So you find exactly what Dave Gibbons and uh, apparently somebody named Leslie S. Klinger have to say about this. And no doubt there are also notes from the original writer as well. A landmark edition, really awesome looking stuff. And finally, as I'm back on camera, we've got these two funky horror guys. Of course, you'll recognize them as Freddy and Jason from Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th series. These are super awesome, elaborate head knockers in a more statuesque style. Very affordable, very awesome. If you are a horror fan, you cannot do without these. But that's it for this week. I shall bid you adieu. So head up, come on down to your friendly neighborhood comic book store, Quantum Comics, where adventure awaits. See ya, Space Cowboys.